Hi everyone, today in this video I will show you how to implement a multi-user paint using uh, latest web technology like uh, Play Framework version 2 and using HTML5 canvas and WebSockets. And this is the current state of the experiment. Um, we have a little area of paint and we can choose the color, we can choose the size of the brush and I have another user here I can draw and both uh, user can use this so let's implement this and let's try to be as fast and simple as possible so this is my Twitter as I said, we want to experiment some canvas, some web sockets, and using play framework. And our example will be uh, to bootstrap a multi-user painter. So let's get started creating a new play application and run it. And this is the skeleton of the application. We have app, conf, directory. In the app directory, we have controllers, we have views. <coughs> and this is the default, the default index page, the default action in the controller, linked to a view with a welcome default message. And if I load the application, you will see this welcome message. Okay. So let's move on to the implementation of our application. In our application, we will have two different canvas. One for the draws and another for the controls. Where you can select the colors and the size of the brush brushes. So let's create them. So we have the viewport containing a canvas, the canvas of the draw. Let's init the width and the height. And we have another canvas for the controls. And now we have to link the script we are going to make. And this is going to be an asset. So let's first create the assets directory. And let's create a new JavaScript main.js inside it. Okay, let's make a scope to not pollute the window variable. So what we need first of all is to have a, a request animation frame polyfill and Paul Irish has made a good article about this. What is it basically? It's to provide an animation system in which you can call a loop every every frame and we we can use it like this. Request animation frame function, and inside this, we recall it. So let's name it loop, and we call a render function to draw into canvases. But yeah, it's only for one canvas usually. 
So we need to declare a canvas DOM element in which we are going to perform some draws in this render function. So let's declare it. It's going to be the draws. And you can also get the context of the canvas. So now let's get started by trying to make the draw works with the mouse. So we need to bind on some events on this canvas. Let's use the native DOM add event listener and let's bind on the mouse down binding a function on mouse down. Let's also bind on the mouse up and the mouse move. So we need to declare them. It's it receive an event an event. Sorry for my French. <laughs> on mouse up. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Uh, basically, we need to draw lines when the mouse moves, but only when the mouse is pressed. So we need to keep a pressed variable here. It's false by default. And when the mouse goes down, we just init it to true change it to true and mouse up change it to false and on the on the mouse move if the mouse is pressed we need to draw a new line between the old position and the new one so we need to store somewhere the position And, and this position can be retrieved with the client X and the client Y on the E event, but it's not enough. We need to to have like an utility function to get the real position on the canvas because it's going to be um, the position on the in the whole page. So let's make a utility function position with e with event, and it need to return an offset. You need to handle the offset of the canvas to return a real position uh, on the of the mouse on this canvas. So this is done like this. With uh, I use jQuery, but it's not you can do without, but it's easier to do. Okay, so that's it, and now we can get the position of the mouse, the real position of the canvas, on the canvas. Okay, so every time something happens, we can get it. And now, when the mouse goes down, we can just save this position. When the mouse go up, don't care. But when the mouse move, we need to draw a line between the old position and the new one. So we need to move to the old position draw and draw a line 
to the new position. And that's it. And we also need to stroke the line to draw it. So let's see if it's working. Okay, so we have a first version of this. It's very simple. We need to add the controls and we need to bind with WebSocket, send to the server, and distribute the events to all clients. So let's firstly uh, make the controls. Okay, I'm just copying what I've made before. So get get element of the controls, the context. We have a dirty variables to know if we really have to render some constants like the size of the button, the radius of the button, of the circle to draw. Select is the size adding to the radius of the selecting uh, button. Okay, so now we need to bind the click event when we change when we select a button. And let's just taking this render and request animation frame. And let's first make the render. If it's not dirty, we can skip, otherwise we can draw. Let's see the field still, it's white, because we just need to to fill in blank to remove the old uh, draws. Let's draw the colors. It's the X and it's the Y in which we are going to draw all the buttons. So for the buttons, we will have colors, a variable I haven't defined yet and to define this, but basically it's the list of all colors uh, available for the brush. And now we are just drawing the buttons. Filling it. Let's make a little border. This is the color of the border. Stroke it. And if C is the current color, another variable I need to define. We just have to draw the selecting style. This is why our select variable 
is far and struck it. And now we need just to need to increment the x value to for to draw all, all buttons. And now we, we can just draw the size the size of the of the brush. And we also need a size uh, global uh, variable constant, which is an area of uh, all uh, the available size. And this is kind of the same, so let's just take this, this, and also the same kind of logic. Instead of the radius, we have the size, and we don't need a stroke style because it's black. But here yeah, we will have the current size. If if it's the current size, it's the same now. Let's just having a radius, a selecting radius around this. Okay, so let's see if it's working. Oop. As you can see, it play, displays the errors, so that's very cool. And this is my error. Okay, so now we see that we have some errors. Get context. Color is not defined. I so I need to define a color, I need to define sizes, and I also need to define the current color, the current size. So for the colors, let's say we have red, we have blue, we have yellow, we have green, and white for removing the color. And let's say we have these different sizes. The color is going to be the first one. The sizes we're going to take five. And now let's see if it's working. Okay, cool. We have some controls, but we haven't yet bind the click. So we need to change the controls. And for that, let's implement the content of the event listener on the, on the click, so let's just copy some code I've made before. Let's compute, get the offset to uh, compute the position like I've made before. Okay, I should reuse the same, I will reuse the same method, position with E. is going to be our index to know which button we have clicked and so there is two cases we click on colors so it's when i is under color length and this is the color we have to we just change it otherwise we have changed probably the size. So let's take into account of the change of the eye and same principle changing the size. <coughs> and now when you have done this we should redraw it so we can just we can just change a dirty variable to false, uh, to true, to perform the redraw of this uh, render function. And now, as you can see, it works. So we can change the 
the property of a arm brush, but now it's not yet binding. So let's make it. And to take account of this, we just need to set the uh, fill style. No, I mean the stroke style to the color and the line width to the size. <coughs> and now it should work. Whoa, cool! It's working. But as you can see, it's not perfect yet because uh, yeah, we d because we don't have uh, begin the path. Now it should work properly. Yep. So as you can see, there is some uh, issues with the draw. It's because we need to set the line join, which is the way of displaying the limits of the line. So let's init it somewhere, like here or here. Line join, and we need to set it at the run value. And we probably also need to set the line cap to run round two. And now it's quite cool. So now we need to bind this to the server. So let's start uh, using uh, WebSockets. So I create a new socket variable and using new WebSocket I need to pass the path of the WebSocket which is going to be localhost and let's say it's slash stream and we need to define this uh, later for the, in the server side and we will have some events on these sockets we will have the on open callback we will have the on close callback we also have the on error but maybe we can skip this and the most important will be the on message, which will be called each time we receive a new message from the server. And on a socket, we can perform some send to send message to the server. So what we can do with this on open and on close, we can maintain a connected variable to know if the socket is connected or not. And the on message will be our logic. And so what we will do uh, with our server, we will send all the events we get, like uh, having the mouse move, the mouse click, etc. And and the server will spread this message to all clients. So socket on message will be called each time a new event is received. So in this method, we need to draw what we have done here. We need to take this and to move this here. But before that, let's make the server part. And let's create a new action in our previous controller. Stream, which is a special ac ac uh, action. And we need to use uh, the WebSocket uh, object and create it an asynchronous uh, result which get a request and we need to to return something uh, with an input and an output stream but it's going to be a promise of this 
because it's asynchronous. So we need an out, which is an animator of a JS value, and we need an int in, which is going to be an iterati. So if you want more detail about this, uh, I recommend you to see the documentation of play framework. And, and usually for the JS value, we can have a JS object. By the way, I could have done a JS object uh, instead of JS value. So we need to do something to push the messages, the, the message, to all uh, clients. So we need to do something like uh, storing the out of every client connecting to the stream. So for that, we have an awesome concept in Preframework, which is called a hub, an hub is available in the concurrent object and we need to give some enumerator inside this hub enumerator and we will create a new hub enum here It's a special animator, imperative animator. We can push some uh, JS value on it. And here, the out will be uh, the hub, and we can get uh, and we can get an enumerator from the with the get patch card method. And here, we can just push. The messages to the hub. But I also need to give the ID of the client. So I need something like a client ID, which is going to be a, a counter here. It's because we need to know who is drawing instead of uh, basically uh, spreading the message to all clients. We can also say who draw, who triggers the events. Okay, so now it should work. I will just uh, add the imports. Okay, and let's add the root, the root of the WebSocket. Okay, so cool. Let's see if it's working. If it's compiling. Okay, we have some trouble. I don't know why it doesn't work. Ah oh yeah, it's not PID, it's client ID. Player ID, client ID. Okay, so it seems to compile. Now let's go back to our JavaScript and let's try to bind the sockets to our drawing uh, methods. Okay, so before implementing this onMessage uh, function, we will see how we can uh, send the events through the WebSocket. So basically, we just need to uh, to send new events in the three mouse method. Because of this, we will make a send function. 
and if you are connected to the web socket we can send the message but we need to stringify it because we can send objects pure JSON objects for now stringify and we also need to pass some uh, global variables we always have this because uh, we need to send to the other client what is my size and what is my color and so now here I can just send p the position I can send the position here too and inside this I can send only if it's pressed and now instead of doing this draw if I put this code into the code out there it should work but the problem here we can, as we can see is we, we, uh, we have maintained a position variable so we need to do the same for every players so let's maintain a players array and we need to store uh, the new states of the player with the PID and M is going to be the message because E is not the message we have the message inside the E dot data but not only because we also need to get the real JSON message by parsing it and now I can do the draw but here instead of position I need to get the player position so I need to do something like this and if we don't have any player player is going to be M and also here is not the, the current player color and size but the message color, si color and size and now it's pretty finished and also this okay so let's see if it's working oh it's pretty working I just need as you can see to uh, fix this uh, this mouse up mouse down uh, problem is because here I haven't handled the current states of the uh, player if the mouse is over or not like I've done with pressed so okay so let's let's fix this I need to know if the mass just came down so let's having a press field to set to true only on the own mouse down and it's going to be sent to the server and here if we have a press we do nothing so only if we don't have press and now it's working maybe my press uh, name is not uh, relevant it should be uh, starting a new line but anyway now it's working we can just test if it's working on another window let's start it okay cool I can change the color and both are working simultaneously 
and I have another computer here so cool as you can see it's, wor it's working and I think it should working fine with two simultaneously uh, events so this was the first basic implementation we have not handling uh, some network uh, lags we haven't handling uh, the uh, retrieving of uh, paints like if I reload the page it's it's blank so uh, there is still a lot of work to do but it's the basics so I hope you enjoy it and see you later